Hi, this is Simon, and today we're going to make a simple system that creates ambient music in pure data. While he didn't necessarily invent the genre, the term ambient music was coined by Brian Eno. As the story goes, he was laid out after a car accident, and he asked a friend who had come to visit before they left to put on some music for him. But the friend put on the music way too quiet, and Eno, unable to get up and increase the volume, had to listen to this very, very quiet music occasionally breaking through the ambient sounds around him. So I lay there at first kind of frustrated by this situation, but then I started listening to the rain and listening to the, these odd notes of the harp that were just loud enough to be heard above the rain. And this was a great musical experience for me, and I suddenly thought of this idea of making music that didn't impose itself on your space in the same way, but created a sort of landscape that you could belong to, you could be part of. And this, I called this, uh, I pompously gave it a new name, which I called ambient music. Now, there are a lot of different ways to make ambient music. But for today, let's steal an idea from Eno's Music for Airports. Here's an excellent simulation of track two of Eno's Music for Airports, by Taro Parvianen. I'll link this in the description. This is what we're going to try to recreate in Pure Data. What's going on here is there are multiple tape players, each of which has one note on it and a period of silence. All of the tape lengths are different, so they're looping at different rates. What happens is we get a system of continuously evolving music with changing note orders and possible harmonies. All right, so here we are in PD. I'm just gonna turn my audio on and go back. Now, in order to make these loops, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with a metro. Command one, metro. Usually when we have these metronomes, we set their length to be very, very short, right? Because we want them to click out beats. But this time we want longer notes, so I'm going to have it much longer. I'm going to set this to 10 seconds. So remember, our unit is milliseconds, so 1, 0, 10, 0, 0, 0. That's 10 seconds. Shift-Command-T. Give me a toggle to turn that on. Shift-Command-B. And a bang. Or a button. Okay, let's turn it on. Okay, that's going to click every 10 seconds. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this to turn on an oscillator. Let's make our oscillator a phaser. So this is a sawtooth oscillator. Uh, I like my phasers a little bit filtered. Just give it a little bit of character, right? Low pass. 6,000 hertz. Um, and then what we'll do, again, Command-1 to create these new objects, multiply tilde. This is how I'm going to control the volume of this. Let's set this out. Again, Command-1 to our DAC. Okay. And let's run that out to both the left and right. Mm, for now, Command-2, let's just test this out, 0 0.1. I'm just going to duplicate this and put a 0. So we're not going to use these for our final version, but we're just going to test our phaser sound. Of course, I've forgotten to what? I've forgotten to set that phaser at a frequency. So let's do that this way. Command-3 for a number. Put that down. Command 1, let's do M2F, MIDI to frequency. Command 3, just so we can monitor it. And now let's run that into our phaser. Bink. Command E to lock it. Let's set our pitch to 60. Note number 60, 261.6 hertz. Let's listen. Sounds good. So now what we need is we need this metro to be our loop. So we have a 10 second loop, and then we want that note to occur in the loop, but we also want some silence. I'm going to do this with a line. Command 1, L-I-N-E. 
uh, line takes an initial argument. Let's set the line to be start at zero. And then it takes its time resolution argument. So how many milliseconds it updates for audio stuff. Uh, I usually go with three milliseconds. It, it's usually enough to prevent pops and things like that. Command three to show a number. I'm going to get rid of these and pass this out to here. Let's do a little bit of cleanup. So now we need this metro to trigger this line. This line's like providing our envelope. So it'll give us our fade in and fade out. So to fade in, I need a message. Command two, one, 300. So that means over 300 milliseconds go to one. Mm, I might even change that to 0 0.1 just so it doesn't get too loud. All right, we can hook this up. Hey, that's great. But as we have it right now, the note never stops. So let's do it. So it goes to zero over 700 milliseconds. Okay, that works. Now, problem is I have to do it manually. Now, let's find a way to have this automatically click. Command one, delay, and let's delay for 200 milliseconds, 2000. Manual click. Does this make sense? What happens is we bang it. It immediately sends this 0.1 over 300 milliseconds. But once we banged it, this bang goes in here and that bang gets delayed for two seconds. 2,000 milliseconds, and when that two seconds is up, it sends the zero over 700 milliseconds out here. Okay. Basically, this is all we need. Let's just do a couple things. Let's take this DAC and unhook it. And now... What we'll do, command one, is we'll put a catch. And we'll call this out. So I've got that running to the left and right of the DAC. When I have a catch, I need a throw. And so now this will send the audio from here to here. Why would I want to do that? Well, because what we're about to do is some duplication. Because we need multiple of these tapes playing. Before I do that, though, let's make a couple more changes. Command 3. Now here I'll be able to control the length of the loop. Duplicate that. And here I'll be able to change the length of the note. Loop length. Note length. And that's our note. So now if I take this, Command D. So let's set this one going. Now notice this one has a note of zero. So let's set this note to be 63. We can change this loop length to be 20,000. Boom. Note length will make this longer too. 3500. Oh, oh. Duplicate it. Mm, 
this time we'll do 68. Loop length of, mm, let's do 22. Note length, mm, 3,000. Duplicate. To 55. So this one going. 18. Note length of 33. Now, these numbers I'm choosing are relatively arbitrary, but the more notes I have, the more I want to space them out. So 20 seconds, 22 seconds, 18 seconds. Let's make this one a little bit longer. 15 and a half seconds. Duplicate. Run out of space here. Here, let's move this. Mm, here we'll do 36, nice low note. Oops. 36, nice low note. Pretty neat and pretty easy. And this is a common thing to do in Pure Data or any other synthesis software is to make something and then do the duplication. When you look at this completed patch, it looks a little bit intimidating, but once we understand that we make one thing and we duplicate it out, it's not nearly as threatening. Okay, so to think about next steps, here's the patch I had at the beginning of this video. This is pretty similar, but I wanna show you the points where it's different. One is I've set a master toggle over here. So this master toggle, you click on it, it sends toggle, and then all of these places receive the toggle to turn those metros on at the same time. I also have a button here, randomize which randomizes all of the lengths of these loops. So let's look. Send randomize. Let's just look at this one here. Receive randomize chooses a random number between zero and 30,000, so 30 seconds, plus 10,000, plus 10 seconds, and then that gets fed into the metro. Here's the other randomize. Choose a random number between zero and three seconds. Add a second, so we get a time between one and four seconds and that's gonna be the length of our note. I've also set all of my notes to be over here. I would have to change these all manually, but one of the things about the example that we just built is once you close it and open it up, you lose all of those notes that are stored. I wanted to make one where all of the notes were in a similar place so I could change scales more easily, and also I wanted to store things when I, when I quit and came back. 
This is just a little trick here. When you turn the toggle on, I also turn on a sampling of an oscillator that's going at four hertz. So since this is sub audio, four hertz, this is an LFO. And then I send out that LFO. And if we look at one of these oscillators, the notes go in here, and then the LFO gets added to that, or rather the note gets added to the LFO, which gives us a kind of vibrato. And last, as I like to do, when it goes out, it goes out, but also it goes to a high pass filter and to a delay. Just a nice little bit of detail. This isn't stereo, you know, I, I like my stereo delays, but I just set this up to be a mono delay for now. So just to remind ourselves, Pink. Thank you.